We continue in this video with the study of kinematics of particles in our course dynamics. And we will talk today about the pending motion and the example of pulleys. This is part of our chapter 12. This is part of the chapter 12, kinematics of particles of our, of our reference book, the Hebeler from Pearson. And we are here, absolute dependent motion analysis of two particles. For example, here we have this cable that is attached to this mine car, but is, this car is being pulled by this motor right here. So for instance, if we know the speed of this point P that is being pulled by the motor, can we establish the speed of the car or the acceleration of the car? Why would that be important? The acceleration of the car is also a function of this force that has to be applied for, to the car in order to pull it. Also, the power that the motor will require to pull that car is a function of the velocity. So those are parameters that are very important to relate. Here we have another example. We have the velocity of the truck, and we want to control the velocity of this heavy object that is being lifted. So how do we relate these two velocities? Can we determine the acceleration of the object if we have the acceleration of the truck? So in many cases, the motion of one object will be depending on the motion of another object. In this example, the blocks in the figure are attached by an inextensible cord that is wrapped around an ideal pulley. An ideal pulley does not have any friction. When the block uh, A moves, then the block B will be also in motion. Therefore, we can say that the motion of each block can be related mathematically by defining the positions between the block and the pulley, and here with the pulley and the other block. We will establish a datum or reference point, which is a fixed point, and we will measure each coordinate as a positive value from that datum. So in this example, we are measuring SA from this position right here. As you see, the length of the cord will not change around the pulley. So this red line is a fixed length of the cord. But the length of A, when A goes up, will change, and the length of this SB will change if this uh, block goes down. Since the cord is in extensible, the core has a fixed length. And so we can establish the total length of the core as this part of the core is A plus this part of the core is L S D, which is a constant variable, plus this part of the core, we will name it S sub B. And that will be equals to the total length of the cord. To relate the velocity of these blocks, we will derive this position of the block. So we derive this length, and remember, we said that first, since it's an inextensible core, the total length will not change. Therefore, it's a constant. And the derivative of a constant respect to time is equals to zero. And that red part of the cord will also not change. So the derivative of this piece of the cord, the length respect to time, will also be equals to zero. So if we derive the expression that we had before, we have the derivative of SA plus the derivative of this little part of the cord time plus the derivative of SB equals to the derivative of the total length of the cord respect to time. These two are zero, therefore we can relate the two derivatives of SA and SB, and we can then say that the velocity of B is negative the velocity of A. 
the negative sign indicates that when A moves up, then the SB moves down. So remember that both are definite positive. So if SA is positive, negative will be that is against that direction. So going up will be negative SA and going down will be positive SB. So if the block A goes up, will be negative and therefore this will be, be positive going down. If we derive this expression, since those are absolute velocities for A and for B, we can differentiate and the derivative of the velocity respect to time to become the acceleration. Therefore, we can prove that the acceleration of B will also be the negative acceleration of A. Here we have another example. As well, we can relate the total core with the position of the block B and the position of the block A. So we select a datum, which is our reference point. For this position of the block B, we select the center of the pulley that is fixed to the ceiling. Remember that the datum has to be a fixed point, and that's very important. So here we have the positive measure for the position of B, we have this height that, as you see, this point is fixed, this point is fixed, so H will be a constant. And then we have the position of the block A, we establish another datum, which is this reference where we are going to measure the position of the blocks A, a and also a positive variable. As you see, those red sections of the chord will be constant. It will not change. Therefore, we don't even have to measure them because when we derive those piece of chords respect to time, that will give us zero. So finally, we have this part of the chord. We name it S sub B. And now this one here, we know that we can ignore because that will become zero when we derive. This one over here is also S sub B. Then we have this part over here, which we will ignore because it's constant. Then we have H and SA. That will give me the total length of the core. Now we derive this expression. We have two times the derivative of S sub B plus the derivative of H plus the derivative of SA equals to the derivative of the total length. But we know that this will be zero and this will be zero because our constant. Therefore, we will get that two times the velocity of B is, and we go to the velocity of A to the other side, we know that is equals to negative velocity of A. And of course, we can say that this same relation applies to the acceleration. Meaning that when the block B move down, the block A will move to the left against the positive direction of the uh, variable S sub A. So just as a summary, we can go over the process that we will follow to do um, problems involving absolute motion with pulleys. We will define the position coordinate from fixed datum line along the path of each particle. We can use different datum lines for each of the particles. We will relate the position of this coordinate with the chord length. Remember that the segments that do not change of in length during the motion can be left out or ignored. We will have problems in which we have more than one chord. So we will have to do two equations, one for each chord, and we will have to relate them uh, uh, in separate equations. We will do problems like those. And finally, we differentiate those equations to relate the velocities and decelerations. So let's do some examples involving pulleys.